Hi booktube, Lynette here again and in this video I thought I would start a short series of videos talking to you about books I have on my TBR. This has been inspired by a video that I saw Jean over at Jean Bookish Thoughts do uh, while she was on uh, lockdown in Scotland. She was there with a lot of books that she's had for a long time and she thought she'd just chat about the books that she had there that have been on her TBR the longest. This inspired me to look at the books that I've had for the longest because I actually have um, pretty much all my books are on my Kindle and uh, I've got some childhood books that I haven't uh, read for a while um, but most of those would be rereads so I'm not counting those uh, even though they're not included on my Goodreads list but I thought I would go through and actually talk to you about the books that I have owned for the longest because I've still got books from 2012 on my Kindle um, and in fact from 2000 and uh, for this video the oldest books I have had since 2011. So in this video I decided that I would talk to you about the classic books that I have had for the longest. When I first bought my Kindle back in September 2011 I thought that it would be ideal um, to acquire some of those classic novels that I've been intending to read over the years. But because I'm, I'm not heavily into classics and classics weren't something that really piqued my interest at school, I didn't want to shell out a fortune for books that I may not enjoy. And at that time, I don't know if it's still true, I haven't looked into it, but at that time Amazon uh, were actually having um, classic novels on their Kindles for free, uh, in their store for free, there were versions for free. So I downloaded quite a few that had intrigued me over the years and that I thought I might enjoy. Unfortunately, it didn't pan out that way and I think of them all, I've only ever read one and that was about King Arthur and his knights um, and it was more of a retelling of the actual legends about him rather than, in a, in a factual style, rather than uh, like I read in recent months, Lancelot. Uh, which is a kind of story retelling. So yes, so I thought I'd take you um, through them from 10 to 1 so you can see which ones they are. I did buy them all in October and November 2011. So I have had them on my TBR now for almost nine years. Uh, I was supposed to be reading some of them this year but it hasn't quite panned out that way so far. We're halfway through the year and I, I don't think I've finished one classic yet. I may have finished one at the point that this video goes up, but no, I'm not doing very well at all. And it's certainly none of these anyway. So yes, let's get on with the books. So the book in the number 10 slot is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by C.S. Lewis. Uh, I actually have got a copy I don't think actually it's where I can show it to you no it's on the shelf uh, just here below me Um, I actually had C.S. Lewis book when I was a child and I did read some of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland but I never actually got around to reading all of it and I certainly never read the follow-up Through the Looking Glass so it has been one that I've wanted to read uh, this is about uh, girl Alice who, while she is um, dozing under a tree one day, she sees a white rabbit run past who is muttering about how late he is and he disappears down a rabbit hole. Alice is intrigued and she decides to follow him down that rabbit hole and, as the title implies, it's all about her adventures when she reaches Wonderland. She has various adventures. I'm sure most of us have, have at least seen the Disney film. Um, so know a little bit about Alice's Adventures in Wonderland at this point, so I'm not going to prattle on about it too long. But yes, that's the book in the number 10 slot. And the book in the number 9 slot is one that I've been hearing about since I was in my teens, and it is one that I would eventually like to read, and that is um, Wuthering Heights. Sorry about the, the ring light um, reflection. Uh, and that is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Wuthering Heights is the is a love story uh, set on the Yorkshire Moors um, and it's between Cathy and Heathcliff. It's a book about love, loss and betrayal and obviously class systems in the UK. Um, 
and this is one like I say that I've been hearing about since I was in my teens it's a story that is as old as time itself um, so I really it so when I had the opportunity to download um, classics I went ahead and found this one obviously like I say it was the ninth one that I downloaded at that time um, and I am hoping eventually to get to this one it's one of the ones that's up there with a, a little a small group especially being by the Bronte sisters I've been to Bronte country many years ago although I'd like to go back and have time to explore because I wasn't given all that time uh, when I was there before but yes uh, so that is book number nine on my list Book number eight on the list is Dracula by Bram Stoker. I'm sure I don't need to tell anybody what this book is about. Uh, this book is about a vampire um, from Transylvania, I think. Um, I'm not quite sure on the, the placing on this, whether that's just my memories of the, the films and everything gone by. Uh, but yes, this is about a vampire. I believe, again, it's about love and loss. Um, I downloaded it because I've always been intrigued by horror stories. I've loved Stephen King's novels since I was in my early teens. Uh, so the classics seemed the way to go there as well. Uh, so I do fully intend to read this one at some point one day. Um, hopefully this year, maybe next if I can actually set myself a proper TBR for classics. So book number seven on the list is... The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is a bind up of some of the greatest uh, stories that have been um, and mysteries that Sherlock Holmes solved. And again, I think I've probably read one or two of them in the past. Uh, I certainly have read The Hounds of the Baskervilles and I've definitely read another one or two of uh, the mysteries um, before. But yes, uh, I, I wanted to read more about it. Um, they were some of the first mysteries I ever read. So they're ones that have intrigued me and I would really like to have a go at reading them again someday, which is why I downloaded them. Um, I should say I'm not in any hurry to read classics. They're just ones that have always intrigued me. So um, which is why there's no definite plan to read them in the immediate future at the moment, other than the classics TBR. Um, or the attempt to read three classics that I set myself at the beginning of 2020. So the book in slot number six is actually a reread for me. It's a book that I read when I was about nine years old and that is Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Again it's another one that's uh, well known so I'm sure you all know that it's about an orphan boy called Oliver who uh, gets into a bit of a sticky slot at uh, the orphanage where he lives and he ends up running away. He gets mixed up with a London gang. And it's what happens to him from there. And how he straightens himself out in the end. Or gets straightened out in the end. Uh, again, it's one that I read a long, long time ago. Because I was only nine years old at the time. I didn't really get all the different nuances of the story. Which is why I have got it on my list of classics. Um, that I bought when I first had my Kindle so that I could actually get around to reading it as an adult and maybe picking up on a lot of the themes that I wouldn't necessarily have recognised at the age of nine. Um, I do feel that nine years old is too young for someone to be reading Dickens. Um, some of the stories do lend themselves to, to being children's stories. Oliver Twist certainly does, Christmas Carol maybe David Copperfield and Great Expectations but there's a lot of content in them that I, that I think as a child that you just don't understand and they are ones that even if you read them as a child I think you do need to reread them as an adult and Oliver Twist for me is certainly one of those. So at book number five on the list is The Iliad by Homer. This is one that my mum has been saying to me to read for a long long time and I don't really know what it's about um, I think it's to do with Greek or Roman mythology in some ways and, and historical tales and legends. Um, my mum has always been vaguely intrigued by uh, those sorts of uh, the gods and goddesses and not in a, on, a, on a level but on, a, a, on, a, on an academical level rather than in a um, magical level. 
and in a way that was translated to me and like I say she's been telling me for years it was a book that she had to read at school so she's been telling me for years that this is one that I should pick up so again it's another one that as soon as I could I downloaded it and I've had it sat there for a while waiting for me to pick up the book in position number four on this list of the ones that I actually purchased is the complete Little Women series by Louisa May Alcott obviously this does start with Little Women and it does um, have Joe's Boys and the other two books included in in this uh, version that I've got on the Kindle and uh, again it would be a reread I read Little Women when I was a child in fact I don't even have the version no I haven't um, I've got some of my mum's books here and I thought I had the version that I read as a child there but I don't think I do uh, so that is another one um, that again I want to reread I enjoyed it um, when I read it as a child but I don't think I really understood maybe all of the adult themes that are in there and again it's one that I would really like to reread um, and, and just see how much more of an understanding I have of it now that I'm an adult and have experience of maybe some of the themes that are in here. So in position number three on the Kindle is Grimm's Fairy Stories by Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm. Again, this is a reread for me. I've actually got uh, somewhere in behind here um, in my children's books, I actually have... Uh, a version of the Grimm's fairy stories and it I read them when I was a child I didn't read them all I read some of them um, but I thoroughly enjoyed the ones that I did read I remember reading them um, and really really loving them so again they're ones that I want to reread uh, some of them have the basis of some of the fairy tales that we know and love today and they're a lot darker uh, than they were than they are portrayed these days so the original versions are a lot darker and I really want I like reading those and just seeing how they've grown out of those um, to, to be the stories that they are today uh, so again at some point um, I want to sit and read through them as it is a series of short stories I probably wouldn't read the whole thing from cover to cover I would probably just read a few at a time um, so maybe that's a project I'm thinking of doing next year is that I will sit and read through them maybe just read a few of the short stories a month um, and pan them out over the year and I'm now going to hear all of you exclaim out loud at my lack of reading um, width uh, depth of you know um, I can't think of the words I want but in position number two on this list is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen yes that's right I have never read Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen I have a second confession I have never seen a TV or film adaptation of Pride and Prejudice I have been shamed recently at work in a good way if, if, if Susie or Tanya or Kai or any of you are watching um I know it's in a good way <laughs> but yes they're all a little incredulous uh, recently when I told them that I have never read Pride and Prejudice so like I say it was the second classic that I downloaded when I had my Kindle uh, with the intention of reading full intention of reading long before now but I've just never got a but I've just never got around to it um, and yes I know it's about uh women and love and obviously um all the intrigue that comes and i think there might be a little bit of scandal in there and i know it's about elizabeth bennett and mr darcy um and no i don't fancy colin firth i think that might have turned me off the bbc tv adaptation but apparently that's the best one um so yeah so maybe i should set myself the task of actually trying to read pride and prejudice before the end of 2020 and maybe even watching a, an adaptation of it as well uh so yes so to my shame i have never read pride and prejudice and finally the first book on the list that i downloaded with the full intention to read but have never gotten around to in a classic is jane eyre by Charlotte Bronte yes 
double shame me not only have i not read pride and prejudice i haven't read jane eyre i haven't read emma i haven't read any of the bronte books uh, by any of the sisters at all uh, to my own horror and my own shame uh, I do fully intend to put this right um, so maybe that's what you can hold me to this year is that by the end of 2020 I will at least have read Pride and Prejudice or Jane Eyre I really do need to get around to them um, they are they're ones that I've just had on my well maybe one day I'm going to read them list since I was in my early teens and I've just never gotten around to them and I really do need to get around to them I really should get around to them and it is to my shame that I've never read these uh, some of the others I could probably get away with I have others on the list um, I have uh, you know alongside the likes of Adventure of Sherlock Holmes and Home of the Iliad and Oliver Twist I've got David Copperfield and Great Expectations I've read A Christmas Carol a few times um and i've got dante's inferno and i've got so many other classics um i've got about 20 classics on this list that i have never read um in total that are on my kindle that i have had the majority of them since 2011 the rest have been on there since early 2012 so i've had them for eight to nine years now and i really do need to start getting around to them at some point so yes, so that's the 10 classics that I have owned for the longest on my Kindle that I have not yet read. Um, there's going to be a follow-up video to this, which will be the 10 novels in other genres that I haven't read, but that will probably come out in a few more weeks. Um, and then I'll try and see about maybe some other top 10 lists um, to do for you as well. Uh, but yes, um, let me know. Obviously, you know, continue to shame me down in the comments. Um, Get nagging me to read definitely uh, Pride and Prejudice or Jane Eyre, but get nagging me to read these classics in the comments. Um, I really do want to hear from you. So please, um, and also please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. And I will speak to you all again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.